Hi everybody and welcome and welcome to the bench and we're going to do a build yes a nice little build uh, right start off with what we've got in front of well what you've got in front of you at the moment is a very quick build I did using the English Bond uh, panel and the English Bond knockout windows and doors as I needed uh, some reference photos for eBay long and short of it so I built this and this has been done using like I say the buff bricks and I was quite happy with it and I thought myself we can extend this a little bit more uh, and make it a little bit better but still being a very straightforward and easy build now what you see at the front is that is it because if we turn it around there's nothing in the back we turn it around it's all empty it's all built on foam board and it's done very quickly it's like I say it was just done for reference photos so that one's been done in the in the buff so I'm we're gonna build one now in using the red uh, brick it isn't gonna be the same as this one uh, because as you know I don't do the same every time because it gets too boring so we're going to do a slightly different version what we're going to do is a double fronted house which is going to be one door four windows but we're going to do that in the red and we're going to build it on the foam board and that's about as much as I can say and so what we'll do now we'll go back over down to the bench we'll start have a look at the materials we're going to use and we're going to get on with it so we'll have a quick run through the moulds. Now I will say this before we go any further that for those who want to go off and buy the moulds and cast your own these all are available, uh, available from Diorama Debris. I will be putting the numbers up on the bottom of the screen uh, so you can go and find them and purchase them. For those who are in the position who uh, you haven't got the facilities to actually uh, cast and things like that I will be making a complete kit of all the parts that you require uh, to do this particular build and it will be up on eBay as well as they will be you better buy these separately and do your own creation so we got that over and done with so these two molds here is one uh, window one door and we've actually got the seals as well above them is the items that you actually get out after you've cast with a knockout section the knockout section there for a reason because these are quite delicate and you wouldn't be able to get them out of the mold they would they would just break the seals uh, these ones are actually ca cast in grey on this build though I'm going to cast them in buff because I think they look pretty cool in the sandstone and that's it for the window sections now we'll move on to the actual panels so we're moving on now to the English Bond panels now I'm only going to deal with one of these uh, uh, moulds because you can see this one this one's not being used and this one has because I only use one panel for this because this is the panel that interlocks with the windows and if you've already got this mould you probably would have noticed down this far side the queen closure has been chopped off simple reason is I don't use the queen closure to actually get around a corner now and that will be shown to you uh, in, in the actual build what you're actually getting from this mould is a full panel uh, a two and a quarter panel also a one and a quarter panel as well and the most important one if you want to tur turn a corner is this one with the queen closures in and the full brick to actually turn a corner and like I say I'll explain what I'm doing as, we, as we're going along as we're doing the build uh, the mould number for this will be up on the screen if you want to go and buy it and like I said uh, on the last one as well when I've done this build there will be a complete kit with everything you need including these bits in so 
let's get some parts and let's get on and get some building done. So to start off with we need a piece of foam board. Now this is a uh, three mil thick. You can use the five mil, totally up to you. I'm using three mil because I've got plenty of it and this is it's not quite a A3 sheet actually because there's been a piece already cut off that I use for another project. But there is enough here to do what I want to do with this little build anyway. So, and the reason you want a full sheet is because you need this manufactured uh, edge all the way around because it is a true edge and it's going to make your life so much easier building. We know this is a, a true corner so we can actually start building and using this corner as our level all the way through. Now, building. We're going to do a uh, two windows and a door so it's a double fronted uh, building and we'll set them out like this because I'm going to set out everything dry before I glue anything it just makes life a little bit easier so we've got door in the center and we've got the two windows and we're going to do this in two lifts we're going to do the ground and then we're going to do the top uh, next lift separately <coughs> spacing out between uh, the windows we're going to use a two and a one spacer. Now, there is a reason why I'm going to be doing this is so we can actually use a full panel at the top, but we'll, you'll see that in a little while. So, a double and a single, and that connects the door up, and the same the other side, a double, when it goes together, a double and a single. and that will connect to that door. Now, I'm dry fitting them for the simple reason is sometimes that on these molds, uh, on the parts, should I say, is when it comes out of the mold, you get a little tiny lip, only very small on there, and then the parts don't go together properly. And if you try and force it, it just they just, just break. So all I do is I get my, just check them, make sure they, they fit, if they fit well or well and done that one don't quite fit properly and it's just a matter of getting the file and just literally going across that edge at the back at a slight angle just taking them little bits of burr off the back of the mold uh, back of the part and it should fit I'm going to do that over here because I'm dropping dust all over the my area I'm working so see yeah and it fits in really nicely you don't have to force it so a double one that end and the same this end we'll put another double like so now we will be gluing another piece that's the piece to return around the corner because we are going to put a side to this but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the pieces for here which is very simply you know measure them up cut them and fit them in but I'm not going to put these pieces here because I want them pieces so when we do the next lift we can actually sort of join all the two together and keep them all nice and square so I'm going to get off and get these bits cut and then I'll come back to you and we'll move on to the second lift the four little pieces at the top have been fitted we will cut to size and fitted so we've got this nice line level line straight the way across the top the next piece to be done is these uh, returns for the end. Now, uh, pick one up that's uh, the right one. Now this is the return, and what we need to do is actually glue these pieces together before we do any gluing on the board. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glue two of these together because we need one for the bottom and one to stick above. So I'm going to get them glued and I'll show you back with you in a second. Right, them two parts which I've glued together, they're dry so we can actually use them. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move this out of the way because this one needs to be glued right into this corner. Now it's really essential that you get it uh, spot on because this one will, if it's slightly out, it will throw the rest of them out. What I normally do is I use my square make sure it's tight against the bottom 
uh, blue. And I find it, it's across here. Plenty of glue on it. I know you can't really see this, but uh, I am putting glue on it. Right, leave the bush there. And this piece, like I say, has got to go nice and level. And the inside of these teeth have to be level with this edge. So it's nice and square. Right, I'm going to give that a few seconds to go off. And then I'll come back and we'll get started. Now it's had a few minutes to go off, it's nice and solid, so all we're going to do now is stick each panel in uh, as we go along. Now on these ones I suggest that you only glue along the outside of the knockout panel because we need to get that knockout panel out and if you glue that in it just makes life difficult when we actually come to actually knocking them out. So bit of glue along the edge there like so and also just a little bit along these teeth just so we can get everything uh, glued together and it's just a matter of dropping them in using your square and also which I haven't got is some water clean water and a brush so I have got one in a pot to actually clean this, oh, there we go, big mistake there, but that'll, that'll bend in. Clean water, I, I would say fresh water, I shall have to get some before I go any further. And we'll, to clean that uh, glue off as we go, and I've made a nice dirty stain on there, uh, hopefully we can blend that in when we're actually doing the weathering. Now, I'm going to go along, I'm going to get all this bottom section glued in, when I've done that, I'll come back to you. Now I've put all the bits in, uh, including we've got this stain bit there, which I'm not too fussed about because we will blend that in when we come to do the weathering. The final bit to do before we leave this to dry is to put this piece in up here. And exactly the same, we just glue it in. A small bit of glue along them edges, like so. Make sure we've got it the right way up, we have. Sure that's then all nice and tight. And yes, I did go and get some clean water. Let me just clean that off. Now, we're going to leave that to dry for a little while, but I am going to put a wooden block on. And I'm going to put a litre bottle of water. And that's just to keep everything nice and flat. I'm going to leave that for a good 15, 20 minutes while I go and get myself a cup of tea. Now, that's been drying for a good half an hour, a cup of tea and a few biscuits. Now, we're going to remove the block and put that to one side because we will be using that again on the next lift. Now, as we put this piece in, it gives us a good start on the second lift. And we start with a uh, window panel. Then we move on to a two, two brick panel. Then we use a full panel, then a one brick panel, and to finish it off, we use another window panel. Now, we need a piece for the end, that's broken, but this piece will be glued in like so. It has got a chip on it, I'm gonna replace that with a different one. So it ties everything in nice and square. Now I'm going to glue this down exact same way as what I did the bottom and then I'm going to put the block on with the uh, litre of water, leave it to dry for another half an hour, probably go off for another cup of tea. I know it's strenuous this uh, building work but you know we have to bear with it. So I'm going to get them glued in and I shall be back with you shortly. It's been stood overnight with me block on and it's lovely and dry. And now what we've got to do is we've got to finish off all these bits and pieces. Now, I've already glued uh, my end section together just to save a little bit of time. 
and well actually I've cut all my bits that I need to fill in all this so the end piece has done exactly the same as what we did down here and I've taken it two courses above the window and then this will take uh, cuts off a two brick panel three of them to actually go across the top of the window like so and that will complete that side then it's just follow suit all the way through uh, part of the full panel and then we go on to that little section there should just go in then our three two courses off the two panel so quite a mouthful and to finish it off this end a another two panel cut to height so that is the complete build of the front what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all them pieces in once it's dry I'm going to cut it out all the way around off the uh, surplus uh, foam board and when I've done that I shall come back to you because I have noticed there's a couple of little issues that are annoying me I some of these panels are just a little bit proud so we're going to give it a uh, a quick sand before we get uh, the sills and that in because it would be a lot easier to do it now than it will be later on so I'm going to get on with that and I should be back with you shortly I've cut all the excess foam board off and now I'm just starting to give it a light sand just using some uh, 600 wet and dry and I'm literally just going over just to take off any high points uh, you don't have to do it but I do like my brickwork to look nice and neat so I'm going to continue on and finish sanding this and then when we come back we'll get on with uh, knocking these windows out sanding has been done I've cleared my mess up and now we're just going to get on and take these uh, knockout panels out now all you do is you get your scalpel or your modeling knife and just cut around the edge all the way around like so and that's the reason why we didn't put any glue in there so we can get these out I uh, hope I'm still in shot because I'm watching what I'm doing but I'm not watching where the camera is so we just and then hopefully we can get underneath that and that will all come out like so and then it's just a matter of getting your scalpel and going through the foam board as well like so I enjoy doing this bit ready to get the wind as well ready to get the sills in I'm not boring you too much I hope let me just press that over I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a bit too delicate here when I shouldn't really be more the foam board it's, I just don't want it to really rip and shred at the back because I'm, we're going to be using the back of this as a finish when we come to do the interior now all we need to do now is just trim this up make it nice and clean and I really should uh, get a different scalpel blade because this one isn't long and narrow so it's a matter of cleaning this all up around this edge 
like so. Now I'm going to do that on all of them, but I'm not going to let you sit through and watch me do that. But I shall uh, get the rest of them all knocked out, cleaned up, and then I'll come back to you and we'll get on and get the sills fitted. Windows have all been cleaned out, the door's been cleaned out. I've put the sills in. Uh, they're not glued yet, but they will be in a very few seconds. Once I've glued them, we're going to move on now and we're going to get on with this side and get this so it's actually standing up right. Now, the piece that we actually cut off from the front, I'm going to be using uh, a bit of this to actually make a little base. Now, I've picked this corner here because we know it's a machine corner and I'm going to cut off just about 50, 50 millimeters and I'm going to cut a strip off for the bottom. So I've cut one strip 50 mil wide, the length of the board. Uh, this is the true corner, I put an X on it because I need to know where it is. And I've also cut another strip. This strip's going to make the side wall like so. So what we need to do now is we've got them pieces cut is get this assembled up now the piece that we put the X on with the true corner put that to one side for the moment the other piece that we cut off this was 50 mil wide uh, it doesn't matter how long it is as long as it's longer than your actual building now all we're going to do is glue that with super glue along that edge just making sure that this bit is level with the bit of foam board underneath. Now I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do it on camera because super glue always goes wrong for me on on camera. So I'm going to get that glued on, and then I should come back to you. Right, the end piece has been glued on, and we just move on now to the actual floor. Now the bit with the X, like I say, is a machine corner. So if we use that into that corner and glue it in like that it's going to make this a perfect right angle so I'm going to get on now and get this glued in and uh, when I've done that we'll come back, I'll come back to you so now the floor has been glued in we've got a nice perfect little right angle at the corner corner here ready to start our brickwork now I'm going to put you back on pause because I want to position this so I can explain how we get around this corner so now we're ready to put the brickwork around the corner now if you've got this mold you know there's lots of bits and pieces that they tell you to use to get around the corner and to me it's a lot of faffing about and this is the way I actually do it so we've actually got our pieces ready to turn the corner that's uh, the, the half brick return uh, what I do is I get my panel like so and this is the same panel as what we've been using this side and I glue another one of these onto the end of it now in good Blue Peter fashion I've already done that so I've got my end already glued on and that is the it's got the stretcher and the header stretcher header same as this side but if we get this rotate it round and then put it in it works like so so you've got the stretcher coming into a header which is correct on English bond the only little downfall is that you get two mortar joints on top of each other and the way I resolve this problem I get my little file and I simply just take them off now when they're all taken off you can glue them into place, push them down, and I don't know if you can see that, but you've actually got your set mortar joint between the two. You've got a little gap at the top and a little gap at the bottom, and it looks right, and it works. It's very simple, very straightforward, nothing too mad. Now, I've got all my panels cut, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start from the top, and I'm going to work my way down this side just gluing these panels on like we did the front and I'm going to put the cut panel at the bottom and you'll understand the reason why I put the cut at the bottom and not at the top when we come to that bit so I'm going to get on now and get them glued on 
and uh, I'll be back with you very shortly. Now, end panels are on. Now we've got to create a gable. Uh, just slightly turn that that way. We get a full panel and we offer it up like so. Now, I'm going to do quite a steep uh, gradient on the roof. So we're going to mark up to the far corner and we're going to come down to this point here which is about uh, two courses and that's the angle I'm actually going to cut. Now I shall get that cut and I shall be back with you in a second. So now I've cut that little panel uh, down at angle as you can see. Now all we're going to do is put a bit of glue on it which I'm going to do and I'm really not going to put much glue on it because it won't be stopping there and you'll understand in a little while now glue that into position like so and then it's a matter of literally getting your scalpel and running down this edge and cutting away your foam board so we do that now okay, excuse me I'm doing this all cockeyed so we've actually got the fall of your roof. Now we turn that round. Now the scrap pieces that you had, we're actually going to make. Uh, we're just going to cut that and fit that piece on to match the angle of the roof, like so. I mark that up. Oh, we mark that up. So we want this end and bring it in level with the top of the gable. Now I'm going to cut that piece and then we'll get this fitted. Now I've cut the piece of board. I've cut a bit of a chamfer off the edge there just to make it sit nice and snug on top of the wall like so. And all I'm going to do for this moment, I'm going to pin it because this really isn't going to stop here. All I've done this for is to show you how to get to, oh, get to the point where you can actually get tiling. Now, that is your picture of your roof. Now you can tile directly to that. Uh, just mark out your half tile and put lines all the way through and then you can tile it. Finish off with your fascia and your guttering. Now the reason I'm not lingering too long on this because this isn't my option this is just to show you how to get to the finish point of doing a backdrop because this would be a little bit of a backdrop for your diorama and you wouldn't have no interior but me I want to do an interior so we're going to take this off and the first thing I'm going to do is remove this gable end if it will come off But we've got a space there. So I'm going to remove this gate blend totally. Come off. Right. And we're going to cut the gate blend off. Because I want to do a bit of an interior. So we'll continue this clip on. I won't stop here. Now, to do a, a bit of interior, because it's foam board, you're very limited to what you can actually do. And I have calculated a few things in to start off with before I started doing this build. And the first thing is I want to back up these brick panels. Now, I left them overhanging for a reason, is so we could actually back them up. So. I'm going to use some of these pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this wall up. This is going to give me the thickness of the wall and also then we can use uh, plaster sheeting over this and get our broken effect along this edge. Now I didn't calculate it in for this edge because this whole build was for doing uh, just a backdrop. So 
I've actually got to cut a bit of this off, this foam board off, and then back this corner up here as well. So I've got two edges that are actually uh, brickwork. Now I'm going to get on and get that done, and I should be back with you in a second. Now that piece came out nice and easy. What I've done, I marked down, ran the scalpel along, and I took that piece of foam board out so I can actually get uh, some brickwork in. And that's what I'm going to continue on with now. I'm going to get this all backed up, and when I've done that, I'll come back to you. Now I've backed up both sides using the two brick panel sections, and what I've tried to do as well, well, I have done, is if we turn it that way, the header course, I've done it so it corresponds inside that it's a header course and the same with the stretcher. Uh, I've done it that way so it looks right and you're going to have nobody saying well that don't match in like they do. Now we've got these two sides done and now we're going to turn to, put that back a little bit so you can see, we're going to turn to the actual gable end. Now, when I did these panels, I put I started with the full panel at the top and put the cut at the bottom out of the way. Uh, this is gonna, this allowed me now to actually glue directly to this, and the corset is going to be right. So the gable end is very simply going to be consists of when I find the bits, two full panels because we need one outside, one inside because they didn't have plaster work on the gable ends in the attics well unless they did a loft conversion uh, it's going to be one panel uh, a one brick panel this is just to extend the panel to make it fit and what I'm going to do is glue two of them together then glue these together and in great blue peter fashion I've already done one so it's two full panels glued together with the two little extension pieces either side simply that's going to go on the top there and I can keep my big hands out of the way and we need to move the camera up a bit so you can see there we go sorry about that we're simply going to mark up three courses uh, this is going to give me enough room then to get my joists well uh, trusses and my wall plate on so three courses and I'm going to mark from that point just to the corner draw a line cut that at a nice angle and that's going to give us our gable. Now I'm going to get that done and I shall be back with you in a second. Now I've cut that piece and all we're going to do with that is simply glue it into place just making sure it's nice and plumb. Now I should do that and I'll be back with you in a few seconds. I've glued that gable piece on as you can see. I've also just got my square sat there I love these squares, they're really nice and heavy. Uh, just to keep it nice and plumb, uh, and it is. And I'm afraid to say this is where the bricklayer finishes, and we're going to have to hand it over to the other trades now, i.e., the carpenters and painters and decorators. And it also, it's the end of this video. Now, the next video is going to be all about uh, creating the, the actual interior. I'm sorry, I'm breaking these teeth in. And to be honest with you, I don't know how long this video is actually going to be. Uh, could be hours because there was loads and loads of clips. But we've actually got to the point of the shell is built and everything now is ready to put the lipstick and the, the mascara on. So with that, all I can do is say thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully we will see you on the next one. Until then.